I'll tell you what, why don't we, um, why don't we just start with you just hitting a rack of balls. Okay. And I can kind of observe and see where you might need some, some help. Uh, this is going to be for you, and we'll go over that later. Okay. Some balls around. Anything. Yep. yep. Just get down, shoot, whatever you want. Okay. Take ball in hand, whatever. I'm really looking at. I'm not really looking at your aim and stuff like that right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to focus on the fundamentals, and just so you know, uh, fundamentals, um, your stance, um, the bridge that you use. Okay. Uh, the stroke. Mm -hmm. And one thing I don't have on here, but also your uh, how you grip the cue and all that. That's okay. what I'll be looking at. Um, at first, and I've never been able to do a closed bridge. I've always shot with an open bridge. Okay. Yeah, okay. But yeah, just use whatever you're comfortable with. Well, rather I should say I'm never comfortable with it. play um until recently i hadn't played in almost 10 years before that i played for a couple years consistently mm -hmm. like weekly i've never played in a league um recently i started playing i tried to play once a week but okay. uh started building more bad habits than good habits, not necessarily <laughs> with the pool, but just with, you know, the environment. Sure. The closest place for me to play is a bar. Uh, I was going to Q and Brew mm -hmm. on Saturdays because it was really empty. So I was trying to just play there. I've been watching a lot of uh, Dr. Dr. Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a good, uh, that's a good, that's a good, good one. I don't know. I know that I I understand a lot of the game, but I don't understand enough about trying to progress through a rack. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that there are plenty of other things. But when I go and play it at bars and stuff, it's more of a... I don't know. I feel like I should be playing on a bigger table. It doesn't... Uh, plus the quarters thing. <laughs> Having to play a dollar game. Right. Nothing serious at that time. Um, I started playing in leagues probably about 20 years ago. There is a nice place on my way home from work. I, I commute for work Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Where to? Uh, Hayward. Oh, okay. And they they have this uh, place called um, Crown Billiards. Mm -hmm. That's where I shoot out of mostly. Oh, okay. In San Ramon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I try to stop there every once in a while, but now it's a league night on Monday through Friday, so. Yeah. Well, if you get there before 7.30, uh -huh. um, you can, you know, YouTube, there'll be a couple of tables available. Um, but yeah, at 7.30 is when they start league. I think they still usually have one or two tables, and there are the two small diamonds like this table uh, in there as well. Yeah, at the, uh, the far side, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
learned recently that I've been chalking tips wrong my entire life. <laughs> we'll go over all of that. Okay. <laughs> So does this table have narrower pockets? Uh, this one has four and a half inch pockets. Oh, okay. They're, they're standard size. Um, I actually got this one from, I don't know if you are familiar with the, the billiard community, but uh, I got this from Oscar Dominguez. He's a pro player who owns a pool hall out in Sacramento. Oh, wow. Yeah. This was in his room. So it's, it's a really well uh, kept table and his father, Ernesto Dominguez, is a uh, is a table mechanic, meaning that he you know, he puts on the tables, puts the uh, so cloth on the tables, and stuff. so he can level them. And he levels them. Yeah, he's he's actually supposed to come level this table. It's it's pretty level. Oscar did a really good job of leveling it, but Ernesto is the master. He can get it absolutely perfect. Plus, you know, you want to wait until after it's settled on the carpet for a while. Like, just got it installed about two months ago, so. Okay. So that way it seats all the way down and right. gets to the right. fiber. All right. I think I've seen enough. Okay. Um, overall, everything looks pretty good. Your, your fundamentals, you seem to have a pretty good um, grasp of the stance. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot to to, we'll, we'll kind of go over what the stance is about and what the proper how to get a proper alignment on your on your shots. But you look like you have pretty good alignment. Um, you know, for somebody who's played for a while, um, I don't like to I don't like to overcorrect. You know what I mean? Um, if you want to, I can give you the absolute you know uh, boot camp where it's like <laughs> break you down and build you back up again. Um, if you're looking just to, you know, improve on what you got, which is pretty good, um, then uh, then I won't do that. I won't you know, I won't tear everything down and try to try to rebuild you, because that can be kind of daunting, because basically that means you're going to get worse at pool before you get better, <laughs> and you know we don't necessarily want that. So. I mean, if you want to start being able to like play in a league, mm -hmm. like, I know I missed the time to join one, so. I think it's like March or something. Uh, do you know when the league starts in, up in Crown? Uh, I believe it's January. Yeah, oh. I, we're almost at the end of our league right now, so okay. yeah, it's pretty close. Um, so yeah, we can get you there, and um, and you don't have to be super great. You know, it's a handicap league, which is nice. So the better you are, you know, the higher your handicap. Okay. So, um, and handicaps are a little bit different in different leagues, but we don't have to go over that right now. All right, so. Let's cover those, these things, I'll just kind of brush over them and then we'll, we'll kind of dive deeper into some of the areas that I think you probably should work on. Okay. Um, so when you're, when you're um, for your stance, um, if you really want, first of all, it should be stable and your back foot should be in line with the, with the shot. Okay, okay, that's number one. Really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get an alignment between different parts of your body to the ball to the aim of the of the shot, right? So when I'm aiming this, I figure out my aim line and we'll go over that a little bit later. Okay. This is the line I want my, my body to be aligned on, okay? The first part of that is my back foot. Where? Is it your heel? Is it your, is it your toes? It doesn't really matter. Whatever is comfortable, but that's part of the alignment. Okay. Your other foot's just kind of off to the side. It could be what we call closed, which means you kind of bring it in this way. Okay. Or it could be more open. It's really what you're familiar with. You know, you know your body. You know, you'll see snooker players because the table's so big. It's a lot better for them because they can get right up to the table with an open stance, right? So they learn how to shoot that way. Okay. But most players will kind of have more closed stance. Close to 45 degrees, mine's usually a little bit a little bit more closed. Because with an open stance you're farther back. This is your farthest back. It's with the foot not moving, right? My body's back here. 
with my foot completely closed, my body's a lot closer, right? Okay. So taller people might have a more closed stance. Mm -hmm. It's just it just really depends on what you're comfortable with. <clears throat> your stance looks pretty good. So um, the other part is is your approach to the ball when you're when you're coming up to do your bridge. Wherever that happens to be, that kind of determines how far away everything else is. Because you should have, whether it's a close-up bridge like this, mm -hmm. or a far away bridge like this, you'll notice my entire body move back. My, my arm, my back arm on my cue, my legs, everything is in the same, same position here as it is here, right? I'm, I'm gonna choke up on my stick a little bit because I'm closer. Okay. So this arm, this hand moves up, this hand moves up, right? So they're the same distance apart each time. So the alignment that you want, your back foot, your elbow, your shoulder, and your head. Okay. Your aim center, wherever that happens to be. For everyone, it's different. It, you know, you'll hear people talk about dominant eye and all of that. Mm -hmm. What really matters is, is when you can see that your head is over the line, Okay. You might be, you might be right between your two eyes. Like if you go over there, and I'll show you okay. what I mean. And I'm not even sure where it is for me. Just watch my eyes in comparison where they are in the queue when I go down on my shot. Right there. So which eye is above the queue? Can you see? Kind of almost in the middle. Yeah. And so for me, that's. That's how I see. And that's the when shot. you see the ball lining into the pocket? That's where I see the, the ball lined up to the, the aim spot. Right, right. Right. Okay. Because if it's like this, right? Right. I'm still shooting in that pocket, but my aim line is like this. Up right. To my contact point. Your contact point. Okay. Right. Make sense so far? Yes. Okay. You know, remember that uh, playing pool is a lot like driving a car, learning golf, whatever. Um, I'm going to probably be throwing a lot of stuff at you, but it's just like the first time you ever got into a car. You know, that you have the instructors t teaching you how to check your mirrors and, you know, check your side mirrors and know where the clutch is if you're driving a stick and just right. everything, right? You have to know everything. But eventually, you just get in your car and go to the store and don't think about yes. all that stuff. Right? It's all second nature. So yeah. this stuff will become second nature. And some of this already is for you, so. And is that what is is that part of what people are talking about when they say like you know, should have a pre-shot routine? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's one of the things that we're going to go over. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, the pre-shot routine is something that we're going to we're going to be going over. Okay. So, um, that's very important. And all of this that I'm teaching you about the fundamentals is kind of part of that. But the fundamentals need to become ingrained in you. Um, really before you start worrying about a pre-shot routine because some of the things that you're doing is part of that routine. Mm -hmm. So we get the fundamentals down first. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, your back foot, your elbow. Now if your elbow is in line with everything, then you'll notice my back hand is straight up and down. Okay. Right? If you're not, you get somebody, you know, you get people who shoot like this sometimes, right? Where mm -hmm. you can see my hand is kind of curled in, right. or my arm is not straight up and down, or they're they're like this, right? It just feels weird for me because even though that's almost straight up and down, I still feel like I'm I'm like this. Okay. <laughs> right. I want to be straight up and down. And the reason for that, <clears throat> when you swing your arm, you don't want to be moving your upper arm. The only thing that should be moving is your lower arm. Okay. And that's a pendulum, right? It, my hand does not go in a straight line, it goes in a circle, right? Okay. Around the, the point of my elbow. Mm -hmm. So if I'm straight up and down, yes, my my cue is doing this, but it's not doing this, right. right? If I'm sideways, then I'm introducing a lot of side to side motion in my swing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Perfectly straight up and down helps me to stay on target. Okay. So, elbow straight up, elbow above the cue, above the foot, the shoulder also in line, and then your head just kind of gets down right on the shot.
So that's the alignment part of it. That's the stance part of it. Okay. okay. You have that pretty well uh, down. I noticed a little tiny bit of a canter in your arm. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's enough to worry about. Uh, when we start looking at stroke and aim, um, if I see that that might be contributing to it, then we'll readdress that. Okay. But I think for now it's not too bad. What I will talk to you about is your grip. I noticed that you had a tendency on some of your shots to put your thumb on your key. Uh, yeah, go ahead and get down on your shot and see what it, see how that see what that feels like. Just aim the ball. Just okay. address the ball. So yeah. Yeah. You see. Shoot like that. Right. And you put your thumb on there. See, here's the thing. When you are shooting, when you're down on your shot and you're ready, you're ready to shoot the ball. Notice what parts of my body are moving. What's moving? Just your lower elbow or your lower forearm. Right. Is my wrist moving? No. No. You notice that I don't move my wrist. As human beings, we have a tendency, we, we know how to make micro, micro adjustments, the reason we can stand up, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we're top heavy, so <laughs> we want to fall over. So our bodies are just good at just adjusting all the time. Yes. <clears throat> so, and because of that, we're always trying to make little micro adjustments. So if you grip your cue or put your thumb on your cue, you're kind of locking your hand to the cue, right? Okay. And when you're moving your arm, notice what's happening to my wrist. The wrist right. is moving. No, right? yeah. And our skeletons are not capable of moving most of our most of our joints are not capable of moving in just one play, one way. Our elbows are one of the few that do. Right. Okay. Our shoulders can move all over. Our wrists, our, our fingers, you know, our finger joints, yeah, they don't, but they don't really come into play on this, right? But most of our joints are not hinge joints. They're ball joints. Okay. Your wrist is one of those. So if your wrist can do this, it will do that to some extent if you're trying to grip the cue and you go through this motion. You have a tendency to want to do this okay. sometimes. <clears throat> so your grip, what we're going to do is we're going to change your grip to just a pivot point, right? Just one contact point on the cue. The rest can kind of lightly touch it. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably see when I'm, if you watch, watch my hand when I'm shooting, I actually have what's called a slip stroke. Okay. I, I let it kind of slip on my hand because I want it to get to a comfortable spot. I don't want to have to like do this, right? So I just kind of, I let it slip until it feels comfortable and then I have a little bit more of a grip. And what you'll notice is this is my pivot point. This finger and my thumb, right? Mm -hmm. This one is touching the cue, these might touch the cue, right. but I don't let them um, affect me so that my wrist moves. Right. And then. And then I'll get in and I'll, and I'll just deliver th through and shoot the shot. Right? Okay. The only time that I might that that might change is when I'm breaking. When I'm breaking, I'm still going to do. I still have a slip grip, mm -hmm. but I know that with my break, I have a little bit longer bridge, which means I hold it back a little farther here. So I'm, I'm usually gripping this part of my cue for the break, and I'll have this still have it open for my aim. When I go to deliver. I kind of grip a little bit more with these two fingers so that I have a little bit, so it's not going to slip when I, when I deliver the, the stroke. Okay. For the most part. It's twisting while you're trying to finish your stroke. Right. Like you want to twist it all. So you want to just lock your wrist. You're going to try to get used to keeping your wrist locked. Okay. That part might be difficult for you to, to change. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a big change from doing this. Try to keep your thumb off of there. Use these two or these two fingers, whatever's mm -hmm. comfortable, and try to get used to keeping your your wrist locked. And not only that, but we want to keep it straight up and down. We okay. don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. Right. Right. And one way that you can do that is by taking your other fingers that are not gripping and pointing them at the floor. If you get used to doing that. The pointing at the floor. Right, and you really do this for practice. Mm -hmm. You're not going to shoot like this in a game because it feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Right. But if you point them at the floor, your wrist is in a good is in a good position. Right. And you can just kind of relax. Make sense? You can do that try. A few shots. Just take ball in hand and shoot those down in the corner. I'm not worried about the aim and the shot right now. Just okay. we're focusing. Okay, something that I'm noticing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and stay down. Stay down. All right, I'm gonna try and push you over. Okay. Okay. It's pretty easy for me to do that. I yeah. shouldn't be able to do that. Okay. So what I'd like you to do, when you're getting down on the shot, <clears throat> don't plant your foot and lean into it. Okay. You want to be. You want your back foot. Remember, your back foot should be lined up with the shot. Okay. Get to a position where you think you need to be. Come down, and if it doesn't feel like you're like right centered in it, mm -hmm. then get up and move a little bit so that you're in the right position. Okay. Okay. You don't want to be leaning over into the shot. And I notice you have a pretty closed uh, stance, but I also notice your shoulder is kind of over the cue. It's not over the top of the cue, it's over. Okay. So what I'm going to recommend is that you just open up your stance just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that will kind of correct that. Should okay. kind of correct it. Let's see what, let's see what happens. So yeah, it's... I s it's uh, Definitely different. Yeah. My naturally wanted to go. Remember the thumb. Yeah, there you go. And that's something that I wonder if it's because I'm right handed. Like everything I think about, I think about right. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm thinking about aligning my shot and addressing my shot. Have you tried shooting right hand? Yeah, I'm not very good at it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm going to try and line you up. Okay. So, I feel like I'm too far away. Okay. You don't have to step too, too much closer because it's micro adjustments. It's not too bad. What, some, one thing I notice is that you still have your shoulder, um, you still have your shoulder a little bit, I'll come over here, I'll show you what it looks like. Obviously I'm right handed, but it's a mirror image of that. Yeah. So, you're kind of like this, so your shoulder is like over the cue. Okay. So, in order to, to be in the right line, you have to bend your, your elbow, your um your arm back this way. So this is what you're doing. See how that looks? Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do is roll your shoulder back. And that might mean that your back foot has to come a little bit this way. So I would say your toes in line rather than your heel in line with your shot. Okay. Okay. You notice on mine, it's my toes that are in line with, with my shot. And I think if you do that, your, your shoulder should be more in line with the shot. So your shoulder, so what I want you to do is just think about rolling your shoulder back. There you go. There you go. Now your elbow is over the shot and you're straight up and down. How's that feel? It might feel a little bit different. Yeah. But I, I, when I turn back, I could see exactly what, you know, what was happening. Mm -hmm. Like chicken wing. Right. And that's... Um, I think that that is probably contributing most to your missing these straight shots. Um, 
because if you because if you're not sure where in your shot see how my aim is changing yeah I mean I'm exaggerating a little bit but but it's causing you to stroke on a different plane right so it's really hard even just the even just the tiniest tiniest bit like this is straight but even this tiniest bit you can see what happens right mhm mhm so if you can get to a point where you're comfortable with your shoulder and really all you you don't really have to adjust too much except just roll your shoulder back right try to roll it back a little bit because what you're trying to do is you're trying to direct this arm the upper part of your arm to be pointing straight back okay not out to the side like that okay go ahead now roll your shoulder back <laughs> there you go I know it's a lot because you're thinking about that and you're thinking about the grip and <laughs> The more I gotta build that memory. Yeah. So exactly. There's a good drill that you can do. You can do this in a bar. Grab a, a beer bottle. Put it on the table. You notice that the that the neck of the bottle is about the same height as the ball. <laughs> and the practice that you do, and you can put this out where you need to, is you just put the tip right at the center, right? Get everything else adjusted. You just stroke right into the neck of the bottle. And you really shouldn't touch the bottle. Wow. That will help that helps train your memory your your muscle memory. Okay. Right? So that's something you can you can practice everything you can practice it at home. You've yeah. got a table that's 32 inches high. Put the beer bottle on the table and just practice. Okay. It sometimes it seems silly to do something like that, but believe it or not, you know it helps to develop that muscle memory. Now remember, what you're trying to do is you just roll your shoulder back, just roll it back. There you go, nice and straight. That looks good. And yeah. I I can feel a difference. You can feel that you're straighter, right? Yeah. And and it's even though it might it might feel a little bit uncomfortable, like you're not used to it, but you can feel that you're stroking a lot straighter. Yeah, I can feel my elbow just doing this instead of um, being more right loose. Right. So another aspect of the fundamentals is your stroke. Your stroke looks pretty good. Uh, I don't think we're going to do a lot with that. Practice strokes, and then coming back and then delivering through the ball. It looks like you're doing that really well. Okay. Just be conscious of that. Be aware of that. Um, sometimes, if you're, especially if you're playing in league and you're nervous because it's your first time playing on a team and you don't want to let them down. Sometimes a lot of your good habits will just go right out the window. Okay. And you'll get up here, and you know, practicing, you're sitting here, no problem with your shot. But when you're in league, you're just like. You know, you're poking at the ball. You're not giving a good backstroke. You're, you may not do that, but it, it's yeah. it is possible for, for you know, yeah, kind of let your let your good habits go out the window. Yeah, <laughs> so everybody gets nervous, I imagine. Right, but yeah, you got good fundamentals there. You know, you just you want to get down. What you're doing though, your frame of mind. Um, let's kind of go over that a little bit. When you're down on the shot. And then we're starting to get into the pre-shot routine here, okay? Let's see. Let's just go ahead and get into that. So your pre-shot routine is I'm doing the same thing every single time. If I'm on the eight ball right here, mm -hmm. I'm putting just as much effort, just as much into my pre-shot routine as me shooting that shot, right? Okay. Same exact due diligence, everything the same. Don't get lazy, come up here and poke that ball in, right? You should have a plan up to where you're going to leave the cue ball, right? When I'm playing the eight ball, let's say this is my eight ball, 
I pretend that I'm shooting a nine ball next, and I and I play for position on that. Let's say my nine ball is where the two is, mm -hmm. and I want to I want to play for position into that corner pocket because that's the natural position for it, right? So what I might do is just do something like that. Okay. I just won the game. I didn't have to. I don't have to shoot the nine ball. There is no nine ball there. Right. right? But I'm I'm shooting exactly the same way for every single shot, all the way up to and including the easy eight ball shot. Okay. Or the difficult eight ball shot. Everything is the same. So your pre shot routine starts with the end of your last shot. Right. So, <clears throat> first thing you want to do, it's the absolute first thing you want to do. You've just finished a shot, you're on to your next shot. What do you do? Look at my next shot. Oh, chalk. Grab the chalk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Part, that's the very first step of your pre-shot routine. Watch the pros. Watch Shane Van Boney. He's a really good one to watch for his routine. He does the same thing every time. You know who Shane Van Boney is? Right? Yes. <clears throat> he always has the chalk right near his shot. He comes up here, he does his thing, he chalks his cue, he puts the cue down, or the chalk down, goes for the shot, grabs the chalk, ends off to the shot. And he's chalking his cue for his next shot. Right? Yeah. There's a couple different ways to, to chalk. You'll see a lot of the pros do it like this. You know, they're, they're, they know what they're doing because they've done this a million times. Yeah. So they're not just doing the grinds. Right. Right. They're actually coding the tip. But he may have a shot. He may be looking at this shot, and he's got the eight ball like right here. Right. He needs to get position on the eight ball. Mm -hmm. You know, he he knows he needs to put a lot of right hand spin on this sucker, right? Okay. So he's actually going to look at his tip. And he's, he's come over here. Let me show you. Let me actually. Okay. So when you're going to to chalk your tip, you want an even coat. It's like putting on paint. Right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to grind it on. You're just going to use the corners of your chalk. See how, see how easily that goes on? Yeah. And if you look at what you're doing, you can easily cover every little bare spot on your tip, including the edges, especially the edges when you're doing a um, off-center hit. Okay. Draw, follow, left, right, spin. Right? Okay. So he's going to do that, then he's going to get on a shot. He's going to look at the aim, the aim line, where he needs to, so he knows he needs to shoot it right here. Right. Now he doesn't use the ghost ball method. There's a lot of different methods of, of aim. Okay. <clears throat> Most pro players, they're not really worried about aiming the shot because you know, even you as a more of a beginner type player, you, you don't need to really think about this. But does he want to hit this part of the pocket? Does he want to hit this part of the pocket? When you're that close, you have a lot of options, right? With Can the he, object ball? That, like With, his aim right. point of where the exactly. Is he aiming the ball like that? Okay. Or is he aiming the ball like that? Okay. And that depends on what you, what he wants to do. Let's say his opponent has a ball right here. Mm -hmm. So he can't really go this way to get to the eight ball. He may have to just draw it straight back and try to hit it in this area here. Right? Okay. If he wants to just draw it straight back, he's going to aim at that part of the pocket. So where he hits. It's not the too much of an edge. Okay. Right, he's going to aim right there. It'll still go in, but it'll straighten up the cue ball so that he can draw it straight back to over here. Okay. Or he may decide to hit it a little bit more, and since that ball's in the way, he'll draw it into this rail and then down into this. So there's a lot of options for him. Right? Is that what you meant when you said right hand? Right hand English is to the right side of the center. Okay. That's what I'm talking about when I say right hand English and left hand English. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> so
So part of the pre-shot routine is not really worrying about all of that. It's just where where's my line of aim? Chalking up the, t the, the cue. So I'm going to have this chalk in my hand the entire time I'm thinking. I'm going to be chalking the tip. I'm thinking about what I want to do. I know I want the cue ball here. Right? This is my this is my final resting point for the eight ball. <clears throat> and I know I want to come off this rail to do it. So that kind of tells me exactly the, the angles that I'm searching, that I'm, that I'm looking for. But I'm, you know, when you're when you've been shooting shots like this a million times, you're not thinking how hard do I need to hit it, you know, how much spin do I need to put on it, all that kind of stuff. This is like driving a car after 50 years, right? I'm not thinking about those things. I just know that I have to do that to get to where I want to go. Okay. So here's the grocery store. I just want to get there, right? <laughs> right. I'm not thinking about how to get here as much as I just know that I need to get here. Yeah. Okay. Pre-shot routine, though. That's what we're talking about. So I chalk up. I have the chalk in my hand. I know the aim I want. I know where I want the ball. I'm done chalking. I put it near me. Get the line for the shot. And then I'll just kind of feel. Does this feel right? Right? Maybe it doesn't. I'm, I'm hitting a little bit too full. So I'll get back up. I might grab the chalk again. Start over. Okay. And I'll get back down. Ah, this feels much better. This is a little bit more of a cut angle than I had before. I know I'm going to be doing right hand spin, so I'm queuing up with right hand spin. Ideally, I'd like to be here since it's my eight ball, right? I want to be a little straighter, but I'm, I'm good with this. Okay. All right. But I'm not just going to get down and go pop. <laughs> right. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to chalk. Look at my aim. I know I'm aiming right there. So I'm in line with the shot, just looking at it. I'm visualizing the shot, right? I'm just visualizing it going in. We'll talk about this in a bit, in a bit but you always want to think positive thoughts. I'll talk about what that means. Okay, this isn't just positive state of mind. Always think in the positive. You think about the cue or the, the eight ball going into the pocket. You think about hitting that and the cue ball coming down and getting position on the nine right about here, right? That's about, because that, that's just kind of tells me what the speed I need to hit. So I'm just thinking, that's the grocery store right there. That's what I'm trying to do. Get down on the shot. Immediately think, does this feel right? Oh yeah, this feels pretty good. Okay. Couple practice strokes. Deliver. That's good. That's your pre-shot routine. Your pre-shot routine is about it's about doing the same thing for every single shot. I don't care if you're playing nine ball and this is your last shot. Right? Granted, you probably don't need to think a lot, mm -hmm. but you should still go through the motions of a pre-shot routine so that it becomes habit. In fact. Once it becomes habit, you won't be able to help it. You'll get up. You know, I don't know how many times I've come up on a shot, and for whatever reason, I need to put a lot of draw on it. You know, it's a straight-in shot in the pocket from way down here. I got to put some draw on it so that it doesn't go, doesn't fall out of the pocket. And I go to shoot, and I miss cue. Why? Because I didn't do my pre-shot routine. I didn't make sure that I had chalk everywhere on, on here. I had a little bald spot. I happened to hit it. It sucks, but it happens. And I get on my aim line, I get down, take my practice strokes. Every single shot precise. You'll see a lot of guys, <clears throat> when you're at the bar, when they're playing and they're all goofing off and they're yelling and drinking beer and all that kind of stuff, and they get down, they get down on their shots and they don't think about what they're doing. A lot of it has to do with ego. Because in their minds, especially when they're young, they're thinking to themselves, I look stupid. You know, I'm sitting here playing a game with a bunch of my friends, drinking a beer. I'm not going to be that serious guy, right? I'm just goofing off. So they won't even try. They'll just get down. They'll just be like, uh, boom, right? right? And they probably could, 
than they probably have in more serious situations take a little bit more time and aim the shot before they shot but they get up you know in front of their friends and all the sudden their ego gets in there and it's like I'm not going to do all that they're going to tease me for being so serious but you get in that routine you know yeah um, I've, I've actually played in situations where it was just a leisurely game and I've been teased for taking it so seriously. It's like, <laughs> oh, look at Einstein here. You know how I got the name Billiards Professor? <laughs> because um, I'm always helping my teammates, giving them pointers and things like that, but I always take things very seriously and I talk about the pre-shot routine and all this stuff. And one of my teammates said, you're the professor. <laughs> and he was kind of teasing me, but it, it, the name stuck. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, so yeah. Pre-shot routine. Um, why don't you give it a try? Okay. okay. And just shoot a couple of easy shots. Put one in the side here, and we'll come down and we'll shoot this one. And then we'll shoot this one on the side. So three balls. Six ball, then the three ball, and then the the five ball. Okay. okay. Here's your chalk. And remember when you're talking to actually look at your tip, because you, because you can tell if there's any, any uh, bald spots there. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. That's the other thing that you should remember is if it doesn't feel right. There's something that doesn't feel right. Get back up and reset everything. Okay. Okay. Because it could be something as simple as your foot is a little bit, it's like two inches to the right, a little bit too much. And you'll see people come down on a shot like this and go, oh, I'm cutting it too much. And they'll lean over, right, to shoot the shot. If you're not comfortable, you don't, if the shot does not feel right, what I always, my, what I always tell people is think in your mind red light, green light, right? If you, don't have the green light, right? Your brain is not going to be, yes, I got this. Mm -hmm. Get up. Your brain, your subconscious, as little or as much as you have played, your subconscious has cataloged every single shot you've ever made, right? Okay. Every, every single shot you've missed. It knows. It knows. When Aurora is sitting off to the side and I'm playing a match and I get down on a shot, and you know I've gotten distracted. The, the music's driving me nuts, or I just missed a couple shots, and I'm just I'm not doing my routine right, or whatever. And I just I get down on the shot, and I'm not feeling it. Right. Mm -hmm. All of those thoughts in my head are just uh, there, so I don't listen to see if there's a green light or a red light. I just I'm like I, I'm just too focused on that, I'm not even thinking about the green light, red light. And I'll get to get down to shoot the shot, and she'll look at it from way over there. She doesn't shoot very much. She watches me play a lot. She doesn't shoot a whole lot, but she knows immediately. Oh no, he's gonna miss this one. And she just wants to yell out, you know, get up, get up. <laughs> and sure enough, I'll miss it. And I won't miss it by much. I'll come down and shoot this shot, and she can see. I mean, I want you to look at this. Stand over there, and just instinctively tell me as soon as I get down the shot, yes or no. right so your brain your brain knows more than you think it knows <laughs> okay how about this one yeah it's very very close now don't think about adjusting your answer but compare in your mind what I just did and how it was just aimed to this one. How's this one feel? Yes or no? Yeah. And how much more yes than the last one? Uh, well, now that you're holding it a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot more, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're being informed also by the fact that I missed the shot, but when you think, when you're, you're not consciously thinking of that last shot, 
Your subconscious just knows. This is how he was aimed, and he missed the shot. Misses are not a bad thing. Your subconscious learns from them, right? So it contributes to that red light, that green light. Right. Right? And less and less and less will you feel the yellow, which is like, I don't know. Right? And that's when you should definitely get up. Yes, you should still get up. <laughs> and and sometimes if you're practicing and you don't know and you just can't seem to get it, then just take the shot. Take the shot and let your subconscious just learn from that. Don't go, oh, okay, now I, need, now I know I need to aim a little more to the right or to the left. Yeah, you can do that, but that's not the focus of it. The focus of it is just to shoot the shot, let your subconscious catalog it, get down and try and shoot the shot again without adjusting for what you just did. Just try to shoot the shot again and listen for the red light, green light, right? You're not adjusting, you're just listening, you're just watching for the, the green light in your head. Right. And that your subconscious will say, yeah, you got it now, right? Okay, go ahead. just focused on the routine. <laughs> That's talking. good. You should get the habit of that. And when you're chalking, you don't have to chalk. Right? Okay. Get in the habit of picking up that cue and just always checking. Sometimes it's just a, a little brush, one or two. You don't have to get on there and just, you know, you don't want to cake that with just chalk more and more and more chalk, right? Okay. You just want to make sure that you have a nice, even coat. And okay. you may look at it and go, looks good. Get it dusted. Just get in the habit of picking up the chalk and looking at your tip. Okay. And put some stuff on there that needs it. Very nice. Everything looked pretty good. Okay. Um, I'm trying to go I can't, I can't ingrain a pre shot routine on you right now because that takes time. Yeah. Right. That's something that you're going to have to work on. You just need to know what the components of that are. Yeah. You just need to, and you need to figure out what works for you, because what works for you might not be the same as me. Sure. When I get down on a, on a shot, and I teach this to people too, if they need it, is the stroke. Especially when we're starting to learn about, um, about speed. Okay. Right? So if you want a soft shot, you want a little bit closer bridge. And the only reason we're doing a closer bridge is because it forces me to sh have a short stroke. You see that? Yeah, you can't pull back so right. far. Okay. You can't pull back very far. That's right. But I can do the same shot here because I, I've been playing long enough to know that I'm just doing this. Right? I'm not doing this. Okay. But you'll notice that when I'm doing this, I'm doing the same cadence. One, two. See how slow the cue is moving? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Same exact cadence if I'm shooting this harder. One, two, three. See how the cue is moving a lot faster? So that's part of my pre-shot routine. Let's get on the shot. Maybe do a couple practice like this. Just to see kind of how, how does it feel. This feels good. No, it doesn't. This feels much better. Okay, now one, two, three, four. So that's part of my pre-shot routine. 
I like doing the one. I can sit there and do a, little, a lot of practice strokes just to kind of get a feel, right, for, for my shot. When I'm ready to shoot, one, two, three, stroke through. Okay. Or one, two, three. Okay. Right? Because I'm trying to, uh, at that point, what I'm doing is I'm trying to gauge the speed that I'm shooting. You know, I might have a shot. Well, I want a shot on the, I want a shot on the four next, right? I do not want to shoot this hard. If I shoot this hard, I could end up behind the 14 up there. If I come around it, I can end up over here. I need to really shoot a precision shot here so I have a shot on the on that four. So I get down, I line with my shot, feels good. I have a little bit of low, but also a little bit of left. And I'm not going to shoot this hard. One, two, three. Did you see the idea there? Is that even if it's a even if it's a soft shot, I still have the same cadence, right. same same speed. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Right. If I'm breaking, I don't want I won't do this break speed, but I'll do pretty hard. If I'm breaking, it's going to be a little bit different. I want it to be long. But I'm also going to be putting a little bit more power, a little more speed in my in my stroke. One, two, three. And that's not even my full break speed. Okay. Right? But still the same cadence and then the same follow through through the ball. Mm -hmm. Same routine every time. Right. And when you do that, it just it just it starts to be what happens is is it becomes this pattern. Right, and as you're playing a game, and you're just doing shot after shot after shot after shot. You're not even thinking; you're just shooting, and that's called getting in the zone. When you're in the zone, you'd be surprised how many times you'll run the table and shoot the eight ball in, and suddenly realize, "Holy crap! I'm, I finished this game in 45 seconds, and you know it was easy. It was so easy, right? Just everything's just going exactly where it needs to go." And, mm -hmm just everything just starts to click right. and that pre-shot routine is what gets you there to the zone that's how you get into the zone by repetition right you drive to work the same way every single day and how many times have you gotten to work and didn't remember the drive yeah right that's that's what you're that's doing you're, you're getting in the zone or how many times have you been driving you know the home depot and realized you're driving to work. <laughs> I've done that before. You know, you're just absentmindedly thinking about something else and you're you're just going through those motions, right? Yep. You're in the zone and, and it's so ingrained in you that you're not even thinking about what you're doing, you're just doing it. Right. Okay. So you feel good about that? Pre shot yeah. routine. I feel like it also gives me a chance to check my elbow and mm -hmm. my grip. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just whatever you need to do to get down and shoot that shot. Try to do that same way every single time, right? You want to get away from um, focusing on the, on the, you know, you do want to watch your grip and your elbow position and your shoulder position, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Work on that, but don't make that part of your shoot pre-shot routine uh, because it shouldn't be. That should, th that should, that stuff needs to come natural. This stuff needs to be ingrained in you before you do this. Okay. Right. Work on your pre-shot routine, but work on your fundamentals. But don't work on your fundamentals while you're in your pre working on your pre-shot routine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So, you want to talk about aim? You want to talk about? Sure. Okay. There's two aspects of this game that allow you to become a professional. That allow you to run tables. Two things. What do you think they are? Uh. I don't know. Making balls, obviously, right? <laughs> you don't make the ball, you're not, your run's over. But what's the other part of that? Making the ball, uh, okay, let's say this is your next ball, right? Before the eight ball. So not only do you have to make this ball, what, do you have, what else do you have to do? Oh, I have to get in position for that ball. Exactly. 
Uh, making, control. making balls and controlling the cue ball to your next shot. If you, if you can control and, and put this thing on a string and stop it on a dime exactly where you want to every time, not even approaching it, but you could do that, that makes every shot super easy, mm -hmm. right? You know that, and you're always going to shoot three balls ahead. You're thinking three balls ahead, okay? We'll get to that. But, so not only do I need to make this ball, let's say I'm shooting it inside. Okay. Not only do I need to make this ball, not only do I need to get position on the seven, I need to get position on the seven that allows me to get to the eight, right? So, if I shoot this down here, and I land the cue ball right there, or maybe slightly to the right, right? So it's either straight in or a little bit to the right. Okay. How hard is it going to be to get to that A ball? Pretty hard. Pretty hard, yeah. I mean, yeah, you start getting really good at draw shots and you follow a spin. You can follow this, cheat the pocket to the right, right? Cheat this way. Okay. And you can put some high right on it and have it wrap around this corner and come down here for the eight. You don't want to do that. Well, wouldn't it be easier for the cue here? You just go boom, and then boom, and then down here and then into this area. Yeah. Right? So that's what you're really thinking about. So you, you're not just aiming at this big area. You're aiming at this area here. Okay. Right? Make sense? Yeah. So first part of it is the part we're going to work on right now is aim. Making the balls. You've got to make the ball before you can do anything. I could get this cue ball in exactly the right position, but if I miss my shot, doesn't matter. Right. I'm going to keep my opponents up next. So, so we're going to work on aim. And you mentioned the ghost ball, right? Do you understand the ghost ball? Uh, kind of. Well, maybe I should just tell you what I think it is. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, kind of just visualize where the ball needs to impact the object ball, and that's where your ghost ball is. Right. The ghost ball, by its very nature, and the nature of humans, is it's not very accurate. Um, it's a good way to, to begin to learn so that you, it helps you to understand the physics of the balls and how they react and everything. As long as you realize that the ball you're shooting, if you hit it in that position, it's going to go in the pocket. As long as you understand, if you contact it there, it doesn't matter if it's coming this way, this way, or whatever, this ball is going to go into your pocket here. Right. right. That's the fundamentals of learning what the ghost ball is. And then the ghost ball, using it as an aim tool is great for beginner. I think you're just beyond that. I think you understand that part of it. Um, I'll, I'm going to show you the, the inaccuracy of it, and then we'll, we'll talk about other methods of aiming. Okay. And you can kind of pick and choose what works for you. If ghost ball works for you right now, that's great. Uh, there are other methods that... Um, I don't go over the really weird stuff like the center to edge and things like that because I don't necessarily believe in them. Um, I think they're a little bit too complicated. But anyway, this is so this is a this is a ghost ball. That little dot in the middle is actually what you're aiming. Oh wow! Well, okay. Because okay. you're aiming the center of the cue ball at the center of where the ghost ball is. The center of where the ball needs to be, the space it's going to occupy, the moment of contact to make this ball go in here. Yes. So center of that ball to the center of that ball. Right. Right? So get down and aim that. Right at the center. So it's going to hit right there and then shoot it. Ooh. That's it. Congratulations. That's the ghost ball. <laughs> So here's the problem with the ghost ball method. Um, where'd you go? Okay. The problem is, is its accuracy. This is great for shots that are within one diamond of the pocket, and the cue ball is one to two diamonds away from the ball. Okay. For that, it's a great, it's a great way, you know, especially on a smaller table like this, you know, with, with a little bit bigger pockets than the pros play on. Um, these are four and a half inch pockets on the seven inch table, or seven foot table. The pros play on four to four and a quarter inch pockets on a nine foot table, which is a lot smaller target. Mm -hmm. And typically, because the diamonds are farther apart, the balls are just naturally going to be farther apart when they're shooting. 
So, something like this is really easy to, to calculate. Right. Right. You can visualize the ball that's right there and you can shoot. The problem is, for some people, the target might be as big as that inner circle right there. Right. They can roughly guess that it's there. And it's okay if I hit here. Mm -hmm. It's okay if I hit here. Right. I have a margin for error there. In fact, the margin's pretty big, right? Right. Any of those spots, the ball's still going to pocket. Yes. But we're trying to hit the center of the pocket every time, right? We want to hit there. So if you're shooting a shot and you miss it by that much, you know, it'll still go in the pocket, but not exactly in the spot that you wanted it to go, right. which means the cue ball also, the tangent line's in a little bit different spot. Here, it's almost pointed at that pocket. Whereas here, also making the ball, it's pointed over there, right? Right. So that could be the difference between scratching and not scratching. You know, so if you're shooting from over here, right? Yeah. So we want it to we want to be more accurate. And if you look, if you're shooting from over there. So go ahead and get over there that, on this line, 45 degrees. This. is not much different than this. That contact point in the middle there, what's the difference between that and that? Half a millimeter maybe, right? right. From, you know, in this direction, that right there. A miss, in fact, is about here, and if you don't hit exactly that spot right there, and you hit right here instead, and the problem is, you don't have an actual target to shoot at. That little orange dot right there is imaginary. Right. Right? You don't know where it is. Yeah. So, with practice, you can get a good feel for that. Mm -hmm. But you're still guessing. You're still trying to figure out. That is exactly an inch and an eighth away from the, center, from the edge of this ball. It's one and one eighth inch. It's not one and one sixteenth, and it's not one and three sixteenths, right? That's very different, and on an angled shot, that's the difference between cutting the ball and missing it completely, right? Especially on a shot from here, right? That shot to here, see, hit the line with this one. That shot to there makes it. To here, it misses completely. Completely, right? How many times have you shot a cut shot like this and whiffed it? Right. Right. So. Ghost ball is a great way to learn how to shoot and to guesstimate a lot of your shots. You know, if you're shooting, if you're shooting this shot, yeah, definitely use the ghost ball. In fact, what you're probably doing is you're probably just your subconscious already knows how to shoot this shot, and you're just going to shoot it, right? And you're going to worry more about do I put some draw on it? Do I put some left or right on it so it comes off the rail the right way or whatever? You're not really even thinking about the shot itself. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, something like that, I would probably just walk up and swing. Right. <laughs> After you do your pre-shot routine. Yes, now. <laughs> now. <laughs> so you're going to be a little bit more careful about your shot. Yeah. I shouldn't say careful. I should say deliberate. You're going to be more deliberate about your shot. But again, you're not really thinking about the aim that much. So I'm going to show you uh, a different method that I like to use. And I don't even use this. I use feel. Um, feel is probably the way that most people who've been playing for many years, pros or not, um, that's the way most of us shoot. You know, I'm going to shoot this eight ball in. I just know what feels right. Oh, okay. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I just, I'm not shooting. But yeah, you know what? I am using, I am using a method that I typically use, and I'll tell you in a minute. But I'm not using the ghost ball. But even that wasn't super accurate because I brushed the rim. What I really wanted to do was go straight into the pocket. So, but, so here's the method. And this is a good ball to teach you this method. We're going to use this as a key ball. So, say this is my cue ball and I'm shooting this shot right here. When I'm shooting this, rather than 
shooting the center of this ball to a spot in space what i really want is to have something concrete something very specific to shoot at ok so a good thing to shoot at would be that spot right there that line that's the contact point that is the point that the ball is actually going to be touching this ball to make it in right. right that's the contact point that contact point is what this ball needs to touch to make it so if it's going to hit here that contact point is right there this little red dot okay that's the contact point that's the virtual contact point obviously if this thing's rolling it's not <laughs> it might not be that part that hits the ball but right you don't understand what i'm saying yes so this spot right here no matter where it is 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 the spot that's going to hit this ball make sense yes so what i want you to do this is where different people have different ways of looking at things some people are visual some people are are more I don't want to say artistic but people can visualize things better in their minds uh, where other people need to see things concrete mm -hmm. right some people are more mathematical some people are more creative Let's see if this works for you what you need to do is you need to take this contact point and line it up with that contact point okay the problem is when you're aiming the ball can you see that contact point mm -hmm. no. no but you know where it is yeah our brains see everything in 3D. So even if you're standing over there, you can visualize in your, in your mind where that contact point is. Yes. Right? You know where it is on the ball. So what you need to do, when you get down on the shot, so go ahead and get down. You're doing two things. First thing you're doing is your cue is lining up through the center of the ball. But your aim, so this is, your, this is where the cue's lined up. But your aim, is lined up along this line. Okay. This contact point that you can't see, but you know where it is, to the contact point on the ball that you can see. Okay. You see what I mean? Yep. So there are two parallel lines. Yes. This line is the line that you're actually shooting through. Mm -hmm. This line is the line that you're aiming through. Okay. You just need to shoot them parallel to each other. Make sense? Yep. Then give it a try. shoot something like that is I want you to make an observation this or make I want you to I want you to observe whether you made it you're just observing it you're not analyzing it okay and you're also observing where in the pocket did the cue ball or did the object ball go okay okay you notice that it kind of hit over here okay which is fine you made the ball but it was a little bit thick of a shot it's okay it's not a mistake it's not it's not good, it's not bad, it's just fact. Right. You made the ball and it went here. You're observing that. Right. Your subconscious is going to catalog that. And then you're going to forget about it and try to shoot the shot again. So and my, you're gonna, and then you're going to shoot it 300 more times. <laughs> right. And as you're doing that, you're always making that observation. And your subconscious is just going to pick that up and it's going to be able to refine your shots to the point where you can deliberately cheat the pocket one way or another You know, in order to make the cue ball go where you want to go. Say so you're shooting this shot. Right, but you need to make the cue ball go in this direction. Right. Where do you want to shoot the ball? You want to shoot the ball in this part of the pocket. You want to create an angle for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's possible to do. Right. The more precise you are, the more control of that cue ball you'll have. Right. So. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. Contact point to contact point. Now, contact point isn't exactly that line that we did before, but you know it's right in the middle of this. Of this Right. right, right. You have to be able to visualize that without having an act. It's better that you have a physical ball to look at, but you won't necessarily have a specific, specific point on there. You just have to be able to see it. Right. Okay. Because the last thing you can do is go up to your object ball and turn it a little bit so that you have a better aim point on it. You know. Yeah, I don't think that they would appreciate. They that. probably would. They probably call a foul on.
straight. You're not going to get that. Do you have the green light? That's all you need to ask yourself. All right. I feel like I got a little closer to the center. Mm -hmm. Let's make it real fun. Good thing you have good lights. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, some bars that might be a little tricky. Crown has very good lighting. I've gone there several times. It's always been very nice. The people are very nice there as well. The last time the the bar table ate my quarters, and I don't know if it was an owner or a manager or something who came over and he like kicked the thing. I was like, yeah, I definitely didn't want to do that. I didn't know he was the manager. I was like, yeah, I definitely didn't want to do that, sir. <laughs> and then he grabbed the stick and he you know hit the thing with the 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 quarter eater thing. Yeah. Like, and I, I know that works, but I don't want to do that either. Yeah. And then later I found out he was the manager, so. I guess it was okay that he did it. Tall guy or shorter guy? A uh, shorter guy. Yeah, that's Kevin. Very nice guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. They do both are. Russ is the other guy. I want that to the right. <laughs> that's all right. Again, don't think of that as a mistake. Just think of that as that's just what happened. I think. Uh, I felt like I should have got up, but I didn't. I'm afraid I'm overthinking it. <laughs> no, you're not. We're not trying to overanalyze. You're just, you're just asking yourself if you have the red light or the green light, right? Right. If you don't have the green light, then go ahead, get up and adjust. Wait until you have it. So I know you said like something you mentioned something called center to edge. Yeah. That's a really weird it requires aiming specifically the center of the cue ball to a specific point and then rotate depending on the angle that you have rotating your cue. Okay. Uh, put it back at what's called backhand English on it, so you would pivot. Uh, it it's very, very tricky and yeah. even I don't fully understand it yet. So, so. Is, well I, my question was gonna be is is this like some kind of edge? I feel like I'm aiming, because like you said, I'm, I'm aiming from the contact point on the cue ball to the impact point, I guess, on mm-hmm. the object ball. Yep. And just, is it only because of the angle that we're at? The, like ang- it, the angle has absolutely nothing to do with it. Because even on a straight on shot, I'm still thinking of the contact point. Yeah, the contact points, as long as the contact points okay, are lined up. It. Yeah, it doesn't matter the angle that you're shooting. As long as you line those contact points up, that ball will go in. I mean, think about it. If we're here, right, you're still lining up. Think about the cut shot that you got to do there. Right. You're still lining up the contact points, right? Yeah. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Yeah, let's try this one. <laughs> so much for the easy one. <laughs> Don't try, just let me give you a little tip here. Don't try to line those two up with your cue. That'll throw you off. Okay. Don't do this. Just get down on the shot like this. And then visualize the two contact points. Okay. Are they the same line that you're aiming through? Right? And if it doesn't feel right, then get up and adjust. Okay. And your adjustments don't have to be large adjustments, right? This is an adjustment.
I might have moved my feet just a little bit. If okay. I'm really off, then I might start all over again, line it up, and then get down. What I'm really trying to do is find that, that aim line, right? And then I'm trying to drop my cue onto that aim line. Because once you're down here trying to figure out where that is, it's very difficult. Okay. Okay. So trying to line up my shot and then get down. Exactly. Line it up. Figure out where that line is. You can actually do this aim, the same aim that you're doing right now, right? From from contact point to contact point. You can you can do that. So I'm lining up the shot. I'm lining up my cues here, but I'm looking to see if I've got the, the, the two contact points lined up. And that feels pretty good. Okay. So I'll drop into that line. This feels good. So that is the simpler of the of the contact point to contact point um, concepts. Okay. Uh, I'm going to explain the other part. If this, if what I just showed you worked for you, then that's probably how you should approach this. If you if you don't have a problem with um, picturing this hidden contact point on the other side of the ball, mm -hmm. as long as you know where it is, it's good. Because you got to remember, when you're looking at a, a cue ball without the line or any reference points on it, you have to be able to visualize this spot right here. Right? <clears throat> Let me kind of explain to you what's happening. And it, it's an interesting concept. So this right here represents from, from, uh, from the, the plane of the table the ghost ball. Okay. The, the, where you're you're aiming the ball to, center of the ball obviously at the center of the line, mm -hmm. right? For the most part. However, so let's grab a ball. We'll put it here. So this round part right here represents the cue ball, and this represents the angle that you're shooting from. You'll notice I put these. Each of these red lines right here, I got one at zero. 14 degrees, 30 degrees, 49 degrees, 61 degrees. You'll notice that on here, there's a corresponding one half, three quarter, one quarter, one eighth. Okay. Okay. So, let's look at 30 degrees. 30 degrees takes you here. Right? And you notice the one half is pointing at the ball. Do you know what that one half represents? The cue ball? Like you're hitting it with half the cue ball? Exactly. It's a half ball hit. Okay. You'll notice that the line of aim is right at the edge of this ball. Right. You see that? Are you familiar with a half ball hit? Uh, what, it, what, what, it, what it means? And no. Okay. So a half ball hit means you're aiming, you're aiming the cue ball 30 degrees is this dot right here. You're aiming the cue ball at the edge of this ball. So half of this ball is is, is aimed at the ball. Okay. The other half of the ball is aimed at dead space. Right? Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Half yeah. ball hit. Okay. A three-quarter ball hit, which is like that, represented by that dot. You'll notice what I did was full ball, quarter, half, three quarter, one eighth, and then super thin. Okay? So this is a three quarter ball hit right there. So if you can imagine this stripe right here, believe it or not, is half the width of a ball. Okay. They, they actually make them that way. You'll notice that the, even the Jim Renfrey training ball 
has the lines exactly where the stripe are, the red lines are. Uh -huh. So it, what's cool about that is it actually represents half the width of the ball. So from here to here is a quarter of the ball. From here to here is a quarter of the ball. From here to the middle is a quarter of the ball. Mm -hmm. right? So if I'm aimed at this ball, a three-quarter ball hit, you'll notice the stripe goes right through the contact, right through the center of the, the ball. This, this dot right here represents the center of the ball, right? That's where, right. That's where the ghost ball center is. You'll notice that the ghost ball center is lined up with the stripe to the ball. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's a three-quarter ball hit. Three quarters of the ball are overlapping. Okay. You see that overlap? Yep. With this shot, half of the ball is overlapping. Right. Right? With this shot, It's almost perfect, but yeah, just the quarter. Yeah, the line is up parallel. So you notice the stripe is now lined up with the edge. Right. One quarter of the ball is overlapping. Yeah. Make sense? You'll notice the little lines, the little curved lines on there. So uh -huh. the one quarter, one half, three quarter. Oh yeah. That represents the overlap. Okay. You notice in each one of those, it's shaped like a football. <laughs> right. Look fatter football or skinnier football, but I just call that the football shape, right? Yeah. So for a really thin hit, the football shape is very thin. Contact points right in the center. Mm -hmm. That's the cool part of this whole thing. The contact point is always in the center of that overlap of that football shape. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep, yep. It's just physics, right? For a 90 degree cut. There is no overlap, but the contact point is right in the center of that no overlap, right? Right in the center. Right. For a very thin hit, very, very tiny little overlap, contact right. point's right in the center. For a straight on hit, now the, it's a soccer ball, not a football, <laughs> but the overlap is 100%. Contact point is right in the center of it every single time. What's cool about that is, you don't necessarily have to visualize the contact points. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is look at this contact point. Okay, so let's use this dot right here. That contact point to the edge of the ball. From there to there, right? From a full from a full on hit, that's the contact point to the edge of the ball. Right? Right. There is no overlap, so you the other half of it is you're visualizing the other half is just the other half of this ball. But basically it's the other half of this, right? So you got this half, I'm gonna match up with this half. Right. Same thing here. Boom. So now a contact point to the edge of the ball is smaller. Right? This is the, for you, it's the right half of the football. Right. All I have to do is match the left half of the same size here to that to give me my overlap with the contact point in the center. And that's, that's your aim line. That's how you aim it. Right? Now you're not aiming through the center of the ball. You're not aiming through the edge of the ball. You're not aiming the contact points necessarily. All you're doing is in your head visualizing that little overlap. And matching them up and putting the cue ball in that spot. And it's going to be in the center every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will. So the, the contact point will be in the center of those of the two halves right. every time. Right? So get down and, and visualize this shot. But as you're getting down, I want you to visualize here's your contact point. That tells you how much of this half of the ball you're, you're, you need to find on this half of the ball to match up. To create a football. Like I said, it's a little bit more complex, but it's the same concept. But now you're not visualizing a contact point, right? 
You right. can actually see the, the, the edge of the ball here. And all you have to do is match that up to this other half of this football. Match that up. So here's your contact point. Here's the half. The other half is right about here. You happen to know, because it's a 30 degree angle, it's a, this is a half ball hit. So this edge of the ball is going to be met, is going to be right there, right here. See that? Mm -hmm. But you're visualizing in your head this half and that half. Marry them up. Put the ball in the pocket. Go for it. Center of the pocket. So now, from the perspective of this ball, how much of the curve, how much of the, the right side of this ball do you see? Uh, what, I mean, a quarter? It's exactly a quarter because this is a 45 degree cut, right? Okay. But yes, yes, a quarter. You don't have to know that it's exactly a quarter, mm -hmm. but you're visualizing that. You're visualizing this quarter of the ball, this, this slice of it sliced off directly where the contact point is. Right. Now, visualize the other half of it and put the cue ball right where that other half is. In other words, this is what you're looking at. See this curve right here? This curve on this side is where you're matching up this half of the ball. Okay. Right there. It's from the contact cool. point. It's just this little, this Great. little sliver. I was I was aiming kind of at the red line mm -hmm. on the object ball. That's almost right there. So I wanted to make sure it was making sense in my yeah. head. Yeah, the red line is actually where the center of the cue ball is supposed to go, so that makes sense, right? Yeah, so I was aiming, I was, when I'm looking at the shot from back there, mm -hmm. the red line on the object ball was almost completing. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. It was yeah. almost like. Almost, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's all you need to visualize is this part of the ball that overlaps this part of the ball. All right. So the football shape is actually on this thing. You can see it. Yeah. Right there and right here. Yeah. The cue ball is always represented by this side. Okay. And the object ball is always represented by this side. Oh, okay. So if you're coming from this side, then this is the cue ball. Right? Yeah. And this is the object ball, or wherever that happens to overlap. If you ignore the red, the red line here and just get down and look at the ball, you can see yeah. where that overlap, you see that the overlap is this line right here. Whereas if you're over here, now you can see that the overlap is this small football. Right. Make sense? Yep. And what you can also do is, in order to kind of help you, put all of these things together, right? If you can visualize the contact point, line up the contact points, right? Line up the contact points. Then, now look at your contact point, look at the right side of the football and the object. And does that feel like the left half of this is completing the football? Yeah, it does. Also, this is about 45 degrees. Does it feel like I'm doing a three-quarter ball shot? So that would be this. So this is the center. This is a quarter of the ball aimed at the edge. Okay. 
can use all those methods. Are you familiar with the concept of flow? Yeah, that's when the spin affects the path of the object. The ball. spin or the or the um, or just friction between the two balls. It doesn't have to be spin. Like if I spin it this way, it wants to throw it in this direction. But also if I cut it, there's so, there's spin yeah. induced throw and yeah, cut induced throw. throw. Yeah, I've so heard if that I, before. if I cut it this way, it wants to go like this. Okay. So yes. a lot of the fact that this is coming over here has to do with throw. So okay. your aim is not as far off as you think it is. Okay. If you really want a true measure of how close, how, how good your aim is, um, then put a little bit of right hand spin on the ball. So it's kind of rolling onto the ball, right? With right hand spin, you don't get that cut and loose throw. Okay. And is that because of the path of the object ball? Like if I was shooting it the other way, I would have to put left hand? Yes. Okay. Yes. What you want is you want rolling. See, like if I could do this, it kind of rolls off the rail. Mm -hmm. See that? Instead of going the other way, okay. right, the other way would be reduced. It would be a reverse. So that would that would induce friction, right? Whereas rolling, there is no friction. It just kind of it just kind of does that, right? Okay. So if you put right spin on it, it just rolls off like that. There's no friction between them. If it's not spinning, there's friction. Right. If it's spinning the opposite way, there's friction. Okay. But if it's rolling, there's no friction. That makes sense. Like a gear. Exactly. And they call that gearing English. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when you're shooting these shots and you're trying to trying to get precise as possible, just put a yeah. little bit of right hand on it, right hand spin on it. Okay. So what do you think? I think that this is helping me understand more like why I miss because I, I feel like sometimes I miss shots that are should have been made and I'm, I know everybody misses shots but I think a lot of it comes down to not having a like I don't have a free shot routine I've sure. never done that I never pay attention to my elbow I don't really think about my stance and how it, it feels different it feels way better mm -hmm. just like when I hit a nicer cue it made me more enjoy what I'm doing. Exactly. So. Sure. As far as the aiming methods, what do you think works best for you? Uh, the second one was working pretty good, but I really like the third one because even though I'm not really fully visualizing everything yet with the footballs, I feel like that's the closest one that I'm, I'm actually using. Because yeah, ghost ball works great, but when you're trying to hit all the way down the rail, it gets a lot harder. Sure. And I feel like I, I, when you line that thing back up, it really made me more comfortable that I was actually seeing what I thought I was seeing. Yeah. So. Good. I mean, not 100% with it, but I feel like that one's something I'm going to look into more. Right. Okay. Good. Um, and I think what what's, was really, really important for you to become a better player is repetition. Um, there's a, there's a, method that people like to refer to called hit a million balls, H-A-M-B, <laughs> right? And that's true, but if you hit a million balls and you're, you're practicing, let's say you practice one shot and you practice it a thousand times, right? Your brain is going to automatically catalog every shot and figure out how to hit that shot. With the knowledge that I'm giving you, my hope is that you'll be able to apply that. Your subconscious will apply all of that. You'll get there faster, but you'll also understand a little bit more why you're missing it, even subconsciously, so that you can actually apply that. You can extrapolate that to other shots, right? This yeah. shot is no different than this shot, right? right? This is about a 45 degree angle shot. So for, when I say 45, this is the line of the balls to the line of the path of the cue ball that this ball needs to take. That's a 45 degree angle. Right? Okay. For a 45 degree angle, I know that I'm shooting a one quarter inch or a one quarter ball shot, right? One quarter overlap. 
I don't even really need to worry about the contact points. I know it's a one quarter overlap, maybe the edge of the ball right there. One quarter overlap. What's the ball? And I know that because I practiced this shot a hundred times. It might be a little harder to see the angles. It's a lot easier to see angles when they're at right angles to the table, right? So shooting this ball straight into, the, into this pocket, 45 degrees, is easy to visualize. Right. But if you're shooting this ball here, where's 45 degrees compared to that? You have to visualize this line and see that, okay, this distance is longer than, or shorter than this distance, so 45 degrees is going to be the same distance here. That's a 45 degree cut. And you, you'll visualize this more and more as long as you understand all these concepts. Your subconscious will catalog and use that as a reference and be able to, to make more informed decisions as you're, as you're playing and right. practicing. Cool. So the last thing I'd like to cover with you today is Cue ball position. Cue ball position is a topic we could we could probably do in three hours. It's, it's a, there's a lot to it. Right. The most important thing is for you to number one understand how the cue ball comes off of off of the object ball after you shoot, and two how much speed affects where the cue ball goes. Those are the two most important at least in the beginning. Okay. So, for example. When you're shooting this shot at 30 degrees, where is the cue ball going to go after it contacts this ball and puts it in? Uh, like over here? Yes. And we want to be more precise than, than like over here. Okay. <laughs> you understand tangent lines? Yeah. Okay. So you know that given a sliding cue ball, there's no forward roll in this ball. When it hits this ball, it has no more momentum in this direction. The direction that this ball is traveling, the cue ball cannot travel in that direction anymore. You just stopped it with an equal sized ball. Right. This it's like those little pets, those cradle things, right? You put on your desk. You know, you pull the ball out, you put it down, it stops and this ball comes out. It's because mm -hmm. of the same size. All the momentum of this ball transferred through all these balls. This ball went up. Came back down, then this one went up. Mm -hmm. Same thing with these. If you do a if you do a sliding ball it stops, right? It can't move forward anymore because it has it's just this ball stopped it. Took all of its momentum and kept going. So you're coming in at an angle and you hit it here. This ball is going in this direction. This ball no longer can go in this direction. Slide it if it's sliding. Mm -hmm. Sliding into this ball. So the only place that it can go can't go this direction anymore, it can only go this direction. Right. Right? Which is why the moment it hits, it goes off on the tangent line this way. Right? right. The only thing that can affect this ball's travel, that can change it from that, is if this ball has some sort of spin, and the friction of that spin on the table forces it to go in that direction. So if I do this, notice it goes in that direction. Right. If I spin it the other way, it goes that way. Right? If I spin it backwards, it goes this way. If I spin it forwards, Right? right, just the friction of the table is going to grab it and, and, and make it go. It's like a tire spinning out on the pavement. So what we're concerned with is a naturally forward roll, rolling ball, not one that's over spinning or under spinning like this. It's naturally rolling forward. It hits this and stops, but it still has spin. Right, so that little bit of spin is going to grab until it no longer grabs, and it's going to naturally forward roll but in a different direction. Okay. If I naturally, if I hit it this way, you know where the ball's going to go, right? After it hits this ball, this hole in the pocket, where's the cue ball going to go? Should it stop? It should, but if what if it's naturally rolling forward? Then it's going to go in the pocket. It's going to it's going to roll forward toward the pocket and into it. If, if it's got a lot of forward roll, right? So how much forward roll it's going to have depends on how hard you hit it. Okay. Okay. It's always going to have a natural roll. It's not going to be overspinning. As long as you hit the ball and it hasn't hit anything else, it's just going to be naturally forward rolling. Okay. Once it hits its object ball, 
if it's going fast, it has a lot of forward roll, and it stops, it's going to be spinning a lot. If it goes slowly, it still rolls forward, but that didn't roll forward very far. The faster it's rolling forward, the farther forward it goes. Right. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that when you come in at an angle, it's coming at 30 degrees. So if you come in at an angle, this ball is going to go on the tangent line. That forward roll is going to cause it to forward, is going to cause it to bend forward a okay. certain amount. And the angle that it comes off this way is going to be the same no matter how hard you hit it. Okay. It's an interesting thing, but it doesn't matter if you hit it super hard, if you hit it super soft. It's going to come the same angle it's going to be coming after it's done with its spin out. Right? Okay. The difference is on a slow one, it's going to, it's the tangent line is going to come out, but on a slow one, the forward spin is going to take over faster. So it'll immediately go forward. If you shoot it really hard, it's going to come out this way, and it's going to be spinning, and then it's going to go forward. Okay. But the resulting angle is going to be the same no matter what. Wow. I know it's a, it's interesting, but that's the physics of, of colliding balls. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So knowing that, this is another really cool thing about this tool. And there's other tools too that show you, but um, this one. If I remember this correctly, let's see. No, this one doesn't show it to you. This one doesn't have it. But this does. This, this is a really cool thing. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put this on the table. I'm going to put this in the same spot. Okay. This is going to tell you what the path is going to be. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So here's our object ball. So if I come in at 30 degrees, it's interesting. It's not exactly the same. Okay. It's a bit bigger. If I come in at 30 degrees, what this chart tells you is that this path that comes off this side. That's the path the ball is going to take. Okay. Okay. You'll notice as you come in steeper, 10 degrees, it's going to come off steeper. Okay. If you come in shallower, it's going to come out shallower. Make sense? Yeah. So go ahead and hit that ball. Just go right over the, right down this red line. Okay. And watch, and hit it slowly and watch the path of the ball. Now let's do 10 degrees, right there. Again, slow. Here's the cut line. So technically, it should go right there. Nice and soft. So that's the first. That's the first thing that you should learn. 45 degrees. 45 degrees doesn't really show, but it's going to be between the 60 and 30, so it's going to be somewhere along here. Okay. Right on that line. Should hit that ball dead straight. Nice and easy. Right to the middle where that goes. You want to be aiming right at the middle of that ghost. Okay. Overcut it a little bit, but the concept still stands. It depends yeah. on the, the angle that you're coming in, the angle yeah, you're coming out. You need, to, you need to hit a few balls to understand exactly how that works. Yeah. Um, and that is for a naturally forward rolling ball. Most of the time, we want a natural forward rolling ball because it's easiest to predict. Okay. There are going to be times. 
there are going to be times when you want to come off at a, at a, at a right angle. Let's say your opponent has a ball right there. So the natural flow of the roll is going to put it right into that ball. Okay. So I want to slide because I know that the tangent line passes it. Right? Maybe even a tiny bit of draw. So this is you know, my next shot's up right here. Okay. So because you're able to see where the ball is going to go if you hit it with natural roll. Right. If you understand with spin. If you understand that, then you'll understand things like if I've got an angle into this ball. about like that. I just know by feel that my cue ball is going to go into the rail and come out pretty much a straight line down the table. Understand those paths. Understanding that is going to help you to learn how to run tables. You know, combination of that shot with the right speed, puts this ball in the right position for me to make the next ball. Let's say my next ball is right here, right? right? And I need to be I need to be pretty precise. Then, again, understanding how the ball comes off of the object, and then how much speed I'm using. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to focus mostly on is speed. Okay. That's the that's the first part that you should be that you should. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this drill, and we're going to get into the progressive practice that I've given you. Uh, it shows a lot of these things in there. So this drill has you pocketing this ball in a corner pocket. You can do it on either side. These two balls, you probably be more comfortable over here since you're left-handed. So you're going to make that 12 ball. But you're going to put follow on it. Let me explain really quick. When you put follow on the cue ball, when you hit it, and I touched on this earlier, follow is going to give this ball natural forward roll. Okay. No matter how hard you hit it. When you hit it, and it hasn't hit another ball, it's not going to overspin. Right? It doesn't overspin and then start going faster. It just already has all of its forward, natural forward roll. Okay. Right? If you hit below, it slides and then gets natural forward roll. Right? So if we do this, you can see it took a second. It took a very split second to start spinning. Before it started going over. Right, before it had a natural roll. If I hit it in the center, see how it slides? Yeah. And if I hit low, it's going to backspin before it gets natural forward roll. But it is eventually going to have a natural forward roll. Right. Because the friction of the table just forces that. Okay. If I hit it high, no matter how high I hit it, it just has natural forward roll. Okay? Yes. So we're going to hit high, and we're going to always hit high enough that it has natural forward roll when it hits this ball. Okay. From this distance, one diamond, half a tip above center is enough to do it. Okay. And the reason for that is so that we have consistency. Because what you're going to do is you're going to give it the right speed to follow down, and this diamond right here has to be below that diamond, anywhere in this area. Okay. Okay. Anywhere along there. So go ahead and give it a shot. So half a tip to one tip. Above center. Remember your pre-show routine. Always try to get in the habit of doing that. Chalk up every time. Let's get our practice cue ball off. So when you're hitting high, what you're really aiming for is that upper red line. This black is one tip. So if you do one tip of English, it's going to be the bottom of this. It's going to be at the top of the black. There you go. That is high English. There you go. You 
Okay. Now, with this progressive practice, with, with this practice that you're doing, you have to make that ball. Okay. It doesn't count if you don't make it. And it's ball in hand, so you don't, you know, you don't have to put it exactly the same spot, but it has to be one diamond apart. So aim to make that, but make sure you add that one tip of high. There's perfect speed, by the way, in there, right in the, in the zone. This is you learning to drive and trying to yeah. combine everything all at the same time. <laughs> I know it's difficult, but you got this. Focus on making the ball, okay? Okay. Aggressive practice is because when you make that shot, you get to move back one diamond. Same shot, but you have to learn subconsciously, so hopefully, that you need to adjust the speed of your shot to make sure the cue ball does make it into the zone. Okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be, you can put it anywhere you want to. Give yourself a little bit of an angle so you're not falling into the pocket. Make sure you make it in the pocket. So no. since I came out of the line, do I go back to the first position? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what progressive practice is. Mm -hmm. uh, when you miss, you go down. You actually start this drill. So this is position one, position two, three, four, five, six, and then seven with the cue ball on the rail. Okay. So we'll do it right here. Alright, so you understand how high you have to hit this? Yes. Okay. There you go. Now you can just kind of go over on the side there. Lean over the table. Okay, if you follow down, but you just have to you just have to adjust your speed. Okay. I I I'm trying to um that felt like I tried to compensate instead of just stroking longer. Mm -hmm. I felt like I took a shorter stroke and tried to impact harder. Okay. You'll find that if you get a good a good follow through on your stroke and um and hit it high, hit it by one tip high, you'll find that you get a really good follow without without having to kill it. Okay. And this far away, all you have to do is cross this line. So you don't have to kill this one. Right. Nice and easy. Just make sure you have a nice follow through on your stroke. We haven't really covered that because you, you seem to have a pretty good follow through. Nice. That was beautiful. Felt good too, right? Yeah. Of course, you're going to do a little bit tougher ones as you make them. So let's try that one. Base of the of the ball is yeah. not over the line. That's good. So that's that's the follow shot. Mm -hmm. We haven't really covered the draw shot. Um, that might be for another time. Yeah. Um, if you want to do another lesson sometimes, we can do it. Um, we can work on the draw. If that's something that you want to work on, great. Uh, there is a progressive practice for that one as well. Okay. 
Um, but let me show you the progressive practice, and then uh, we'll call it a day. I'll show you how this works. This is in a nice little folder. You can apart, so it's a little easier to do all these. Awesome. So, so this first part of it will tell you how track how um, progressive practice works. It just kind of explains it. Okay. And it talks about the concept of um, changing changing your shot based on your success or failure. Okay. Right. Um, a little more explanation. So this kind of shows you, um, like with this one, cue ball positions. Um, and this is the actual progressive practice. Here. So what this is telling you, there's four different drills, OK? So A, B, C, and D are the different drills. OK. One through five are the difficult two. OK. OK. So <clears throat> on this one here, we're doing a stop shot, right? Um, with a stop shot, we didn't really cover it today, but um, you know what a stop shot is. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, as you're farther away, you kind of have to put a little bit of draw on it to get it to stop properly. Okay. And that just means you're aiming lower on the cue ball, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly like a follow shot. You want your cue to be as level as possible. You want to hit it low and just follow through. Okay. Okay. Um, try those, and if you have trouble with it, we can cover it next time. Okay. So, stop shot. The object is to stop it in the gray area, and this will tell you right here. Leave the cue ball in the uh, in the square. Do not touch the end rail. So it can't hit the end rail, but it has to stop somewhere in the one diamond area. Yeah. Okay. Just a stop shot. And this shows you that the ball stays stationary, the cue ball moves to make it more difficult. Okay. Okay? And this one here, this is, a, this is the follow shot. You'll notice you're moving both balls. Oh, this yeah. is position one, measured by the object ball, and this is the drill we were just doing. Okay. You the two balls back. They're always one diamond apart, and you're always trying to get it into that gray area. Okay. Okay. This one is the draw shot, just like the stop shot. Only this one here, you have to draw back, and you have to draw back past real, past one. Okay. Right? So draw back at least one diamond. This stays here. So if, even if you're shooting at four, you have to hit it and draw it back past this diamond. Uh, so if you put the cue ball here at four, mm -hmm. and the object ball's right here. Mm -hmm. You have to shoot a draw shot, hit the object ball, and then come back at least oh, one diamond. Okay. Okay. Make sense? Yep. I was like, wait, you have to draw it back four diamonds. Uh, <laughs> on, on later drills, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then if you if, if we're doing two, I'll show you just the difference between these. If you're doing the twos, your stop area, your stop shot's a little bit tougher. Okay. Your draw shot, you actually have to draw it back to the number that you're drawing that you started at. Wow. At least as far as the starting point. If you're on three, you have to do that, and it can't it can't go more than two diamonds past. Oh wow! It's a lot more precise. Okay. Yeah. They get harder and harder. That's why it's progressive practice. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're progressing through each of these drills to find out where your what your number is. Then as you get better at these, you're doing the harder ones to try and do the same thing just to it just it really really focuses on one one aspect of your of your game okay. and what's really cool about progressive practice is you can make up your own you can give yourself a shot um like it wouldn't even be here but you might have a shot where you're like i'm gonna put the object ball on this diamond right mm -hmm. in that spot and then each of the diamonds is one two three four, five, six, seven. And the object is to draw it back to that spot. Right. Right. So there's a lot of different there's a lot of different uh, drills that you can make up yourself. Okay. Just to make them harder and you know something that you want excuse me, you want to work on, you can you can make up your own drills for them. Okay. Um, you can do position drills, you know, you can put put the object ball here, cue ball in the middle. Um, and then shoot the shot and try to leave the cue ball in certain positions around the table. Right. So I'm just playing for my next shot. Exactly. Like saying, turn it, play three shots ahead. Right. Okay. Right. Well, in this one here, you're just you're just trying to place the cue ball in a specific position. Okay. So you you would put you put this in the center, right here. 
you put this ball halfway to the pocket, pointing at this point right here, so you know exactly where to put it each time. And you shoot, and this would be one, this would be two, this would be three, four, five, six, and then seven would be back in the, in the center of the table. Okay. And that would be your progressive practice. You're, you're just pr you're practicing the different lengths, okay. the different lengths of the cue ball. You're making this ball here every single time, but you're controlling the speed, the speed and the spin and all that kind of stuff to, to different parts to be. Exactly. Or it could be stage. it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Right. So you're just you can make up whatever you want. Okay. And and then create your own progressive practice for that. Okay. But these here will give you a really good guideline, and these are good ones to start with. Yeah. Your fourth one. So we've done the follow shot. The fourth one is a cut shot. Okay. This ball is one inch off the rail, halfway between the diamonds. It's really not a difficult placement. About like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to start on this diamond in the middle. Okay. Make that ball. And then the second diamond, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And okay. you're just going to cut this into the pocket. Okay. If you miss, you go down a number. If you make it, you go up and up. Okay. Again, this is your practice. You can do it any way you want to. You don't have to start at one. If you know that you've been practicing your cut shot and you've averaged a four, start at three. You don't have to start at one. Okay. Start at three and then figure out where you're... Because what that's going to do is going to figure out where your 50% point is, right? If you're at four or five, four or five, four, you keep missing five and making four, you're, you're at four and five. Okay. Right? That's your number. <clears throat> Until you start making more and you start getting a little bit higher numbers. Mm -hmm. Your final number, so what you're going to do is you're going to do this shot 10 times. Your final shot determines your number. If you make it, you move up, that's your final number. If you miss it, you move down, that's your final number. Okay. So if you shoot four as your last shot and you miss, your final score is three. Right. Make sense? Yep. So <clears throat> when, you, when you're doing all of that, you've got well, I'm going to make a copy of this. I will, uh, I'll actually send you the PDF of this. So okay. if you need to print out certain parts of the page. The only part I don't have right now, I'm going to add it, are these. If you ever want to set up your own progressive practice, you can, I got three of these sheets for you to just kind of okay. draw, draw out what you need. Okay. And you can make copies of those too. Uh, but like I said, I'll send you the PDF. Um, awesome. And in my PDF, I just need to add these pages. But um, you're just going to put, so the set number is one, two, three, four, or five. Okay. Right? And then you've got your A, B, C, and D. So what you're going to do is you're going to mark down your score here. You're going to put the total, and then you're going to average them. Okay. Right before, and, that's your, and that's your score. Okay. So my recommendation, and again, your practice, you do whatever the heck you want. My recommendation is you do all four on one page. Mm -hmm. You get yourself a final score for all four of them. And then if you can score above a four or a five, whatever you decide is the deciding factor, on all four of them, then move on to the next number. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, you have my email address. Yeah. I don't know if you, let me give you a card. <clears throat> let me give you a card. I don't know where you put them. Okay, here you go. On the left end. So it has all my contact information. Okay. This phone number is actually her phone number, but uh, okay. that's you know if you want to call and you know if you want to make an appointment um, and you're, you're having trouble with the site or something like that, but you can always go. You can always send an email there. Okay. Um, you can text that number if you want to. Um, email's probably the best way to, to communicate with me. Okay. And then that's the, the website. Okay, great. So, how do you feel? I feel like I better understand what's actually happening when okay. I'm playing, which I didn't fully understand before, so <laughs> it's just progress. Yeah. That's great.